everyone and welcome to Union Church of Los Angeles combined English language Sunday morning worship service we are happy to have you with us today here in the sanctuary and on zoom at this time those of you who are on zoom please mute your devices thank you very much for our prelude I will be playing let there be peace on earth <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Union Church. On um, this second Sunday of Advent, I hope you guys are uh, feeling the Christmas spirit. I hope you guys have good plans for the holidays. I hope you're looking forward to the holidays. Um, hopefully it's not stressful uh, because we know it can be sometimes or busy. But um, as, as we're, my, I'm a little tired, so if I seem a little off, I apologize, please show some grace. Um, and uh, I just, to me, like what's on my heart today is to remind ourselves that, to remind me that Jesus did come in the flesh and he gave me the right to be the son, the child of God, the daughter of God, and, um, and things are okay. Regardless of what happens all around us, things are okay. <laughs> so. Welcome to Indian Church and let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are good, that you sent your son here on earth as a child to grow up, to become a man, to show everyone what it's like to be a child of the Most High God, to express your will and desire for every one of us, health, prosperity, and eternal life, love and communion with fellow family brothers and sisters thank you that he took our sins on the cross and he was raised again from the grave for our justification so that we may part of your family forever and ever we're thankful grateful for this gift open our eyes open our ears today as we praise and worship as we listen to the prayers and the sermon that our hearts be open and receptive that we hear your words and that that living powerful word bears fruit in us and make us more and more in the image of Jesus in Jesus name we pray amen let's worship amen thank you Vessi good morning everyone again please stand if you are able and join in singing our first song keeping with the theme of peace we're going to do an upbeat number entitled peace like a river One. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. 
I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got peace, joy, love like a river, fountain, ocean, I've got peace, joy, love in my soul. I've got peace, joy, love like a river, fountain, ocean, I've got peace, joy, love in my soul. Thank you. Please remain standing for our next song, The Christmas Carol, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. like um, it's time for our community prayer we do believe in prayer in unity we do believe that prayer in unity is powerful and um, we have our practice of community prayer I will read the part for one and you guys will we all read the part for all together let us pray Lord make me an instrument of your peace where there is hated ha hatred let me sow love where there is injury pardon where, where there, there is, is discord, discord harmony where, where there, there is error truth, truth. Where, where there, there is doubt faith, faith. where, where there, there is despair hope. hope where there is darkness light and where there is sadness join O divine master grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to, to be, be understood, understood as, as to understand, understand. <laughs> To be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born unto eternal life. Amen. Thank you, Vessie. 
Once again, please stand if you're able and join in singing our opening hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. Advent, we light the candles that are symbol of the light of Christ, the word come to us. And today we have Abby and Johnny. Johnny has been an elder here, served for many years. Abby is part of our worship team as well, occasionally, and they're missionaries here in um, near downtown Korea. What's Echo Park? No? Park. Echo Park, kind of. So um, we'll, we, we'll um, hear the prayer, the Advent prayer, and we'll light the candle. Thank you. O God of peace, come. Form us into your peacemakers. Enable us to look within ourselves, to make straight our crooked hearts, to patiently and lovingly await changes in ourselves and others. As you gather us tenderly and hold us close, may we also show that same compassion to the world. Fill our hearts with your peace and our lives with your love, that these may flow from our lives and into the world. We ask this through Christ, our Savior and our peace. Amen. Amen. In response, please join in singing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
It is time for passing of the peace. Please read with me and then uh, get off your seats and meet people and say hello and greet everybody. Welcome them to church. Let's read. Christ, Christ is, is our peace, peace. Not, not an easy peace, peace not, not an insignificant peace, peace not, not a half-hearted peace, peace. But may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us now. The peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. Please pass the peace. Thank you, everybody. We can take our seats again, and it is time for reading our scripture. Today's scripture is from Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 8, and Pastor Kenya Buki is on Zoom to read the scripture for us. So, Pastor Ken. Good morning. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole uh, Judean countryside, all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandal. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks to God. Thank you, Pastor Thank you for that reading, Pastor Ken. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. This morning, it's a wonderful privilege to be able to bring God's word on this second Sunday of Advent. We are this Sunday remembering the second uh, principle that undergirds the gospel. Every year we don't just celebrate Christmas, but we celebrate Christmas in the context of Advent. Some folks may have grown up celebrating Advent, others have not, but Advent is that four-week period before Christmas in which we begin that anticipation, that preparation. The word Advent comes from the Latin adventus, which means to anticipate or to prepare. And we do that by lighting these four candles. Last week, we lit the first candle that reminds us of the principles that the gospel represents, the candle of hope. Today, we, are lighting, we, we have lit the candle of peace. Next week, we have the pink candle. It's kind of fun. The pink one kind of stands out. Anybody, trivia here, church trivia, anybody know what the pink candle represents? What's that? Take a wild guess. Joy. It says joy. It represents joy. It's the pink one, joy. I thought it represented love, but no, it represents joy. The fourth one is love, and the center candle, we only light this candle. We have it in the back. The deacons do a great job of, of keeping it. It's the Christ candle. We light this once a year, this wonderful center candle. And what it does is it kind of gives us this looking forward to Christmas morning. It gives us this anticipation. Now, we want to invite you, if you are able, to open your Bibles. There's a red Bible there in your pew. On page 812, we have the reading for this morning's gospel message. It's the first eight, the first eight verses of the gospel of Mark. I want to start off by giving a little bit of context and a little bit of background. There are four Gospels. They all tell the story of Jesus from four different perspectives. We have the Gospel according to Matthew, the Gospel according to Mark, and the Gospel according to Luke. Those three first Gospels are known as the Synoptic Gospels. Synoptic Gospel, a Greek term, synoptic, which means to see together. In other words, the first four Gospels 
tell the story, the same story in the same chronological order from three different perspectives. So it's seeing the gospel from various perspectives. The gospel of John is different. He writes from a completely unique stance. He writes the gospel almost excluding, he actually excludes every parable. There are no parables in the gospel of John. Mark is also historically the first gospel that's written. So many biblical historians think that Mark was actually the original writing that Matthew and Luke sourced from. So read with me again the proclamation. This is arguably, historically, the first gospel writer, Mark, introducing the story of Jesus to humanity. All right, so how would you introduce Jesus? If it was your task to leave a letter behind that said to those who came after you, I want to tell you something about Jesus. This is how Mark starts it. He says, in the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Very, very unusual. Before we unpack the significance of that opening statement, I want to play a very brief clip. This is a clip from a comedian, Steve Harvey, who had a very successful uh, run of comedy shows called The Kings of Comedy, right? And in one of these shows that was blockbuster, he paused and he acknowledged, if I were to introduce Jesus, this is how I would do it. Go ahead and roll the clip. If I had the pleasure of bringing out Christ, this is just how I would do it. It ain't got to be the way you do it. You might not think it's just right, but this is how I would do it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce a man who needs no introduction. His credits are too long to list. He has done the impossible time after time. He hailed out of a manger in Bethlehem, Jerusalem, by way of heaven. His mother is still headlining in the Catholic Church today. His daddy is the author of a book that has been on the bestseller list since the beginning of time. He holds the record for the world's greatest fish fry. He fed 5,000 hungry souls with two fish, five loaves of bread. He can walk on water, turn water into wine. No special effects, no camera tricks. He has a head shot on every church fan across the country. Even before the kings of comedy, he was hailed the king of all kings, ruler of the universe, alpha and omega, beginning and the end, the bright and the morning star. Some say he's the rose of Sharon, and some say he's the prince of peace. Get up on your feet. Put your hands together and show your love for the second coming of the one and only. That's a quite an introduction, amen? <laughs> Every gospel has a version of what Steve Harvey just did. This is Mark's introduction to the Messiah, to the promised one. So having that clip fresh in your mind, let us reread. How does Mark introduce Jesus, the Christ, 
into the history of the world. He says, in the beginning of the good news. Let me pause there. This is the first term that Mark introduces into the lexicon of Christianity is this term, good news. We hear it all the time. This is the same word, gospel, that we are translating. The original Greek term, Greek was the language of the Roman Empire. The context of Mark writing this gospel is the occupancy of the Roman Empire. In the occupancy of the Roman Empire, the common language alongside Latin was Greek. Greek was a language that the New Testament was written in. It was a language of the, 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 the largest empire. And the word that, that Mark uses, good news, is a very political term. It's called evangel, euangelion in the original Greek, and it literally means good news. Contextually, the good news, the gospel, the God spell, would go forth when there was royalty that was incoming. Very common in the ancient world, in the first century world of the Mediterranean, before royalty came in, there was a herald that would come before and announce the way, announce that there was a, an emissary, there was some dignitary that would go ahead of time and they would declare the good news. Good news, the king of whatever place is on their way. The other time, the gospel, the God spell, the, the evangel, euangelion, all the same terms in the original Greek that's in this first opening line, is when there was a military victory. When there was a military victory, the good news would go forth. We won. Good news. We, we, we made it. So when Mark starts his gospel using, co-opting this term evangel, this term gospel, this term good news, he's using a Roman empirical term that either meant a king is coming or to mean that a battle has been won. Shots fired out the gate. Amen? I want you to hear that. When Mark says, I want to introduce you to the gospel, he's taking a term that would have resonated with with Julius Caesar, a term that would have res been resonated with Alexander the Great, and now Jesus is saying, I'm bringing my kingdom into this earth. The gospel, amen? The second thing Mark does says, this is the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now that term, Son of God, did not originate with the church either. <laughs> it again originated with the Roman Empire. The term son of God was the very title that Julius Caesar had at that time. Julius Caesar's name was son of God. So when Mark introduces the gospel, he's not tiptoeing around anything. <laughs> he's saying, I want to bring you the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God. Let everybody take Notice, I want, that's what I hear. I want you to hear that. He says this, he pulls back, and this is the second thing I want us to look at this morning as we look at the introduction of Jesus Christ and how Mark introduces the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Note as well, Mark's gospel completely omits the angels, <laughs> the wise men, the uh, the, the, the virgin birth of Jesus, all of that is omitted. He starts right out of the gate saying, this is the gospel of the Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then he does something very interesting. He gives us the prequel. Amen. Any Star Wars fans in the building? Amen. Star Wars OG trilogy that started in the 70s. Epic, epic trilogy. And then there came this other three movies, right? And, you know, spoiler alert, I, I kind of am partial to The Mandalorian as my favorite version of the prequels. But they're basically the backstory that get us to the main story, the original story. The Gospel of Mark starts with the prelude. It starts with the prelude, and it says this, as it is written, verse 2, as it is written, the prophet Isaiah, go back. Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Going back all the way to Isaiah chapter 40, this prophetic text 
that every Jewish person would have understood. So he says to the Roman Empire, this is the king of kings. This is the one. And he says to the Jewish audience, the one you've been praying for, the one you've been lighting candles for, the one you've been anticipating, this is the one Isaiah spoke of. And then in verse 4, he says something that I think is very important, what I want to uh, bring to you this morning. The idea that I, I just jump to the conclusion, amen? I had this whole buildup, but I think we just, we're, we're getting right to the conclusion, amen? The Gospel of Matthew starts with not necessarily the story of Jesus or Virgin Mary or, or, or Elizabeth or, or the classic nativity passage that we'll read in the, in the Gospel of Luke. And it doesn't start like Matthew. Matthew starts with this very specific genealogy showing how Jesus came directly from Moses, came directly from Abraham, came directly, directly from the lineage of King David. This is a pure bread, right? This is what he's saying. Luke says everything about the context. Mark says, in order to understand Jesus, in order to understand the kingdom of God, let me tell you about John the Baptist. <laughs> everything you need to know about Jesus stands on the shoulder of John the Baptist. And this morning, the, the question that I want to present to us as we're thinking about the, the, the coming of Christ, as we're thinking about Christmas, the question I really want to ask myself and I want to ask you by extension is whose shoulders are you standing on, right? Whose shoulders are you, every one of us are, 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 are a part of a lineage. We're part of a, of a, of a, of a, of this long line that came before us, every one of us, whether we had positive uh, experiences with our parents or grandparents or mentors or teachers or coaches, every single one of us are standing on the shoulders of those who came before us. And there are people who will some someday stand upon our shoulders, our children, our descendants, our nieces, our nephews, our loved ones, those who we mentor. I love that Mark introduces the gospel by saying Jesus is standing on the shoulders of somebody I need to tell you about. And he says this in verse 4. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Saying in order to understand Jesus, understand John. He came baptizing he came calling for forgiveness of sins and repentance of our evil and wicked desires that are that are intrinsically inside each and every one of us he says in verse 5 the people from the whole of judean countryside and all the people of jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river jordan confessing their sins now john i don't know if you can hear it, it says in verse 6 now john was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, there is, one, there is one more powerful than I coming after me. I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. Amen. In other words, he's saying, I, I think Mark is saying, John is, it was the first one that came out of the wilderness, out of the darkness, out of the shadows. Every one of the Gospels, in my opinion, does a very specific uh, task of pointing the reader to think, to think about where the good news came out of. It did not come out of the synagogue. The Gospel did not come out of the, uh, the elite of society. It did not come out of the places where we would think Jesus would have been born out of. He was born in a manger out of Jerusalem, amen, as Steve Harvey said, by way of Bethlehem. I just, he came from the wilderness. John the Baptist wore camel skin, a leather belt, ate wild honey and locusts. This is the most politically correct way Mark could have said he was a little bit unique, amen? <laughs> he was special, amen? He wore, he didn't wear the, the, the traditional outfit. He stood out and his message was not subtle. His message was repent. For the kingdom of God was at hand. Can I translate that into Rubenese, amen? I think what, what he's saying is the kingdom of God is here. Make a decision. Stand, follow, or get out of the way. 
This is what John the Baptist was saying. And that this, he was saying the kingdom, repent, be baptized, and follow this new path, this new way. He says something that is very powerful, Mark does, as he's pointing to the message that Jesus is bringing. This is verse 8. I want to close with this, with this thought. Mark says, I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with what? The Holy Spirit. Another version says, I have baptized, Mark says, another version says, Mark is describing that he is baptizing with water, but the Holy Spirit will baptize you with fire. There's this beautiful, beautiful tension that I believe the Gospel of Mark is setting up for the rest of the way we understand this good news. First of all, it is on site. It is confrontational. It is, an, it is an, a, going to be an affront to the powers that be. One of the thoughts that I've, I have just coursing through my mind as I prepare for Christmas and as I prepare for this holiday season is here we are kind of again on the holiday season and I don't know why but I feel this sense of anxiety every time I go on to Amazon.com. Amen. Anybody else feel that? Maybe nobody will uh, uh, empathize with this, but the last few uh, Christmases, I've just found myself going to the mall or going to the store less and then just going on Amazon more and just clicking, right? Especially during COVID. I felt so guilty that our kids had lost two years of school and, you know, we had these stimulus checks coming in, right? So we're like, hey, we had a horrible year, but Christmas, we're going to just make it up with all these gifts, right? And I just think about how easy it is for our holiday season, for our Christmas season, to digress into a season of over-consumerism, over-indulgence, over-drinking, over-eating, over-spending, and we completely miss the fact that when Mark is saying, listen up, the king of king is coming. Make way the straight. Get your stuff together because there's good tidings. There's good news on the horizon. Darkness was an expanse in the land. Mark is writing this in a time around 60 common era AD or 60 to 70 AD. In the year 72 AD, very important year in the life of Jerusalem, there was the Jerusalem revolt. All throughout the text, there's this tension. There's this tension specifically with John the Baptist's followers who were very hardcore. When are you going to raise up the revolution? You're calling yourself a king? Where is your army? You're calling yourself a lord? Where is your territory? And there's, they're kind of pushing them. When are you going to bring it in? It actually happens in the year 72 that the Jewish people revolt against the empire. What resulted in that failed coup against the empire was known as the ravishing, the siege of Jerusalem, the year 72. The city of Jerusalem burned to the ground. The Roman Empire leveled it. And they did something very impactful. They didn't just level the city. They tore down the temple in Jerusalem, the, the holiest place tore down in the year Jerusalem. Jesus was kind of saying that, hey, the temple is going to come down. Right? So Mark is kind of pointing to this end time thing. Get yourself ready. The darkness does not win. Light, peace, joy, hope, love, the things that we're celebrating around this Advent wreath, these are the things that the gospel of Jesus came to bring. He did come to bring peace on earth, but the paradox that we see throughout this gospel is peace comes through turbulence joy comes through walking through the dark night of the soul love comes through forgiveness love comes through forgiveness come through redemption there's this paradox the light comes into the comes in the midst of the darkness this morning i, I want to leave you with the question as we prepare for 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 uh, continue our preparation for the holiday season. I want to ask you a question. There's no, there's no punchline. There's no gimmick. But whose shoulders are you standing on this, this holiday season? Who came before you? Who made, the, who made the path easy for you? Who sacrificed so that you can get into college? Who sacrificed so that you can 
learn the trade, who, can, who, who made the path a little bit easier for you in your life. There may not be a lot, or they, you may be blessed to have many people who made it a little bit easier for you. This season is an opportunity for us to pause and acknowledge them. And also, we remember during this holiday season that there are people that are watching us. There are people who we get to make a little bit, their path a little bit easier, amen? We get to sacrifice for them. We get to, 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 to invest our time, our resources, so that they learn from our mistakes, that they don't have to repeat the cycle, amen? This is the peace of Christ. If you were raised in a situation where substance abuse and violence and poverty and, and all these things that are so debilitating to our journey, you can break that cycle. You can break, this is the good news. You can break that cycle. There is a new day. There's a new moment. And in fact, your greatest days will come out of your darkest nights. This morning, we remember the shoulders of those people who we stand upon. This week, we lost a very dear person in our church, Emmy Endo, who spent many, many decades in our congregation. She would sit around the corner here. Betty Partida and her sister Cindy and many others were caretakers to her. She transitioned in the, this week on Wednesday, went home to be with the Lord alongside of her family. I think about the Endo so often because uh, Richard and myself and the, 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 the caretakers of the building, Brother Roger, Kevin, Dan, and so many others that helped to maintain the building. There was a, her husband, uh, Goro Endo, <laughs> spent decades caretaking. And I see little glimpses of Goro and Emmy Endo all throughout the basement in particular, because there's these little unique ways in which they set it up so that it's like, like if you've ever seen uh, Goonies, it's like booby trapped, like in a way that it's just perfect. It's like, I, and I think about that, I'm like, oh, this is really nice. This is like, makes a lot of sense. But it's screwed in with wood, and, and it's in a way that was probably done in the 70s. And it's still functioning. I stand on the shoulders of Goro and Emmy Endo. We stand on the shoulders of so many people that came before us. And people in our lives are looking at us as well, that we get to make their way straight. Mark starts the gospel, the good news, the confrontational, this powerful thing by saying, Jesus stood on the shoulders of John the Baptist, and he was a wild boy. <laughs> he was a wild card. And this is the good news. He baptized, I baptized with water, but he'll baptize with fire. This last uh, week, my wife and I had a chance to, or two weeks ago, we had a chance to celebrate our 21st anniversary, amen? That was a, so I had a pull for that guy. <laughs> Because, it's, I, I know we mentioned it before, but 21 years later, <laughs> I would do it all over again, but I would tell myself, listen, <laughs> listen, don't try to make her into you, <laughs> right? I think we get married, though, especially the younger you get married, the mo younger you're in any relationship, you're like, give me a few years and I kind of will <laughs> work this, this joker out, Right? No, no, no. John baptized with water. Jesus baptized with fire. In any healthy relationship, in any healthy relationship with God, with our church, with everything, there is just this symbiotic balance. And that is the beautiful thing that I've learned in 21 years. There's no trying to manipulate and coerce the other person. There's no trying to, you know, th th that, that is over. Amen. <laughs> the first few years, it was a lot of that. Amen. At, by year 20, hopefully we come to a place where we're like, no, you got fire, I got ice, you know, and we work together. At our worst, we work against. At our best, we complement. John came to baptize with water. Jesus comes to baptize with fire. John came with a radical message of you're in or you're out. Jesus came with the message that all are included. There's this beautiful complementary, complementary message that is all throughout the gospel, and it starts with John. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the shoulders of all those saints, God, that have gone before us. Your word says that the death of a saint 
is beautiful, God. Lord, I ask right now, God, that you would continue to remind us, God, of all those, God, like Emmy, God, all those like our brother Goro, all those, God, like our sister Haji, God, and so many others who have transitioned, God, in these years. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that they ran their race, God, so that we can walk a little bit easier, God. Lord, I pray that we would choose, God, that we would choose the hard path in our lives so that others would have, God, the same opportunity to thrive that come after us. God, we thank you for this balance. We thank you for this paradox. We thank you for this compliment, God. Lord, you bring us fire and you bring us the water of your baptism. God, I pray that you would light us, God, and also soothe us, God, in our journey. God, there's so much ahead. May your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And it's in the strong name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Reuben. During the interlude, please take a moment to think about upon whose shoulders you stand. Amen. Thank you, Dan, for that peace. And as we prepare our hearts to give this morning, we're reminded of all the ways in which God so generously has given to each and every one of us. Amen. We just are fresh off of our Thanksgiving season. And again, we want to say how grateful we are for all the sacrifice, all the volunteering hours that are represented in this congregation. If you haven't had a chance to see some of the poinsettias that are in the social hall and in, the, in room one, two, three, these are opportunities for us to bless those in our lives with the poinsettia gram, amen? And uh, that's all happening because of the generosity of folks just like yourself. This morning, we want to take our offerings and our gifts this morning. There's pink envelopes there if you would like to give in person. And we also have ways for folks to give online. We thank you again for the ways in which you support our congregation and know that every one of your contributions is helping us to expand this good news, to move it forward in the city of Los Angeles and Little Tokyo and in Skid Row. Ushers, you can go forward. Please stand if you're able to this morning. and loving God, bless these gifts, God. Bless the givers, Lord. We thank you 
that every good and perfect gift comes from you. Lord, I pray you would fill the, the cups of each and every person in this congregation, Lord, with health, with resources, with gifts, with creativity, Lord, as we go into a new year. God, that everything that you deposit into our lives, into our hearts, Lord, may we become funnels for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I want to invite Vesti to come on up and uh, give us some announcements. Let us know what's going on in the life of the church. Thank you, thank you, thank you. A few announcements, uh, not too many. Um, so we still do our prayer Sunday, I mean, Saturday morning at 8 a.m. The prayer is on Zoom. Um, in the newsletter, you can click the link. You can be in your pajamas. You can keep your camera off. It's a good time. People will pray for you, and, and it works. Um, also, um, na Sunday, 9 a.m., Pastor Ken Yabuki, who read our scripture today, Pastor Ken leads a um, Bible study, a very good Bible study as well. Um, let's see, Urban Farm. Oh, yeah, are we still doing it? Or I'll, you'll come in and announce that, right? Okay. So, and we'll do that. So, thank you for um, contributing to the gifts for the Union Rescue Mission kids. Today, we, today was the last Sunday, so I saw a lot of gifts over there piled up, so I'll pack them today and they'll pick them up. Thank you very, very much for your generosity. Um, Christmas Eve 24th is a Sunday. We'll have a service. We'll have some food and stuff and kids program. So, so please come, enjoy, so um, have fellowship. And uh, I believe the other two announcements are Anna. So Anna, come on up. Um, to add to the Christmas Eve service, we are going to have Christmas Eve here. I think you've, uh, Ruben gave a plug last week. We're going to have tamales and sushi, so we're going to have that. But it's also going to be a potluck, so start thinking about what special dish you're going to bring and share with all of us. Um, those with kids, or if you know anyone with kids, next week um, we're going to do a special Kids Sunday School. Um, so they're going to join us for the first half, and during Passing of the Peace, we're going to dismiss them, and we're going to have uh, Bible studies, some singing, and craft for the kids. So bring your little ones. So if you know anyone with, with kids, have them come. We want to share the message of Christmas with them. Um, so with Urban Farm, um, it's still going. Uh, we have some produce that's ready to be harvested. Um, we aren't meeting before service, but if you're interested in helping and in helping us, you know, uh, check the waters or help us transplant, um, the seedling, please come see Kevin <laughs> or myself. <laughs> um, and we'll, we'll show you what to do, you know. Um, we're, Kevin and I were both involved in other areas, so if we can get extra hands to kind of help us along, that would be uh, really helpful and beneficial. Um, and then finally, the poinsettia gram. If you saw uh, the, one, the flowers that are on the stage in the fellowship hall, um, those, we are going to be delivering those to those who are 90 plus. Um, but we do, we ordered extra so that you guys have a, um, an opportunity to buy one, take one home, or to give. Um, so if you're interested, come see me. Um, they're $5, which is a, a great bargain because we pay a little bit more for that. But it's decorated, um, handmade bowls, and we have a little card that goes along with it. So we don't have that many left, but we really want to share the message of Christmas um, with you or for you to share it with someone else. So um, that's all. I'll pass it to uh, Pastor Ruben for the benediction. Amen. Before we uh, give the final benediction and kind of in the, along the same vein of uh, remembering and thanking God for those who have come before us and upon whose shoulders we stand, uh, I just want to acknowledge my mom this morning. She's in the audience. Amen. Ama, quiero darte un saludo. It's her birthday today, amen, and she uh, is here worshiping with us. And uh, quiero darle muchas gracias a Dios por ti, ama. Yo, el sermón era de la, la, los, los hombros de, de quien estamos parados. And I'm here, mom, I'm here because of you. I'm here because no. of you. Amen. So I want to thank God for her. Uh, can we sing happy birthday to you? <laughs> in uh, English? Can you do it in Spanish? <laughs> Hasta las mañanitas te tocó, ma. Estas son las mañanitas que cantaba Rey David. Hoy por ser día de tu santo te las cantamos a ti. Despierta, me envían, despierta. Mira que amaneció. Y a los barrios cantan la luna y hace mejor. 
I want to invite you to stand to your feet this morning, amen, as we close our service and we close with this final benediction. We want to do something, start introducing something into our Sunday routine. For many of you who come to church on Sunday, it's so exciting to meet people, connect, fellowship, grab some goodies, and head home. Uh, but we really do pray as we prepare for the services and as we prepare as deacons and as leaders, we pray that when people come here and just from every aspect of cleaning to preparing our liturgy, we pray that people are able to encounter the love of God, the peace of Christ, the joy of the Spirit of God. Amen. And if you have felt moved by God, if you felt challenged this morning, we want to create space for people to come up and receive prayer. We have Johnny. Our sister Suzanne, Megan are going to be available to pray with you. As we close with a benediction and a song, we want to just invite you to come up if you feel led to receive prayer. We're going to start introducing this into our Sunday rhythm, and it's really just an opportunity for what the Bible says, if two or three gather and agree on anything, it shall be done. When you're here at church, you got the poinsettias, you got the lights, you're feeling it. When we get into the car, we lose it right away, man, as soon as we jump on the 110. So if you want to seal whatever God is doing with the word of prayer, there are people prepared to pray with you. Amen. So let's close with this benediction as, this, as, as we go forth and sing. Please feel, come, feel free to come up and receive prayer. Pray with me this morning. Gracious and loving God, we thank you. Lord, there are no greater shoulders that we stand on than the shoulders of the Alpha and the Omega. God, you are the Prince of Peace, God. And we can firmly plant our feet, God, on the, the Prince of Peace. Lord, we thank you that today we come into this house and we come into this holiday season knowing that no matter what the world is experiencing, your love, your hope, your, lo your joy, and your peace transcend God, transcend and ground us in the love of God. We thank you for it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may we go forth to be your hands and your feet if Jesus in this world. Amen. Thank you very much. That cleans our service. If you wish to come up for prayer, please do so. Otherwise, we are dismissed. Have a great week. We'll see you next week.